Hello, it's Professor Adam. Let's talk about how molecular orbitals are formed. We previously learned about atomic orbitals and how they could be combined to form linear combinations of atomic orbitals, or molecular orbitals which can be expressed using this equation where Ca is the contribution of the atomic orbital to that specific molecular orbital. There are several rules that govern if a molecular orbital can be formed from a linear combination of atomic orbitals. The atomic orbitals should be close to each other. This is to ensure that there is a good overlap of the orbitals. The energies of the orbitals to be combined should be similar. If the energy gap is too large, the stabilization effect of the bond formation will be too small to allow bond formation. And finally, the orbitals should have the same symmetry to allow molecular orbitals to form when they overlap. Why are some interactions called sigma and some pi? Sigma interactions are symmetric towards rotation along the bonding axis. If there are two in-phase s orbitals, they will overlap to form a sigma bonding molecular orbital. N in the equation is a normalization factor. If the two s orbitals are out of phase, then the overlap will be destabilizing, giving a sigma star antibonding orbital. If these orbitals are then rotated around the z axis or the bonding axis, they will not change, confirming that they are sigma orbitals. Sigma bonds formed from p orbitals are formed in a similar manner. If there are two in-phase p orbitals, they will overlap to form a sigma bonding molecular orbital. If the two p orbitals are out of phase, then the overlap will be destabilizing, giving a sigma star antibonding orbital. Again, if these orbitals are then rotated around the z axis or the bonding axis, they will not change, confirming that they are sigma orbitals. How about pi orbitals then? Pi molecular orbitals have a change of sign when rotated about the bonding axis. If there are two in-phase p orbitals perpendicular to the bonding axis, they will overlap to form a pi bonding molecular orbital. If these orbitals are then rotated around the z or bonding axis, they will change sign, confirming that they are pi orbitals as the yellow and blue regions have interchanged. The same thing will happen if there are two out of phase p orbitals. They will form a pi star antibonding molecular orbital. Then, if these orbitals are rotated around the z axis or the bonding axis, they will change sign, confirming that they are pi orbitals as the yellow and blue regions have interchanged. Whilst there are five d orbitals, only some of their combinations will result in molecular orbitals. The dz squared orbitals can combine to form sigma bonding and sigma star antibonding orbitals because they are symmetric to rotation along the bonding axis. The dxz atomic orbitals, however, can combine to form pi bonding and pi star antibonding orbitals because they are anti-symmetric to rotation along the bonding axis as they have a phase change where yellow becomes blue and vice versa. When atomic orbitals meet side to side, as they do when dx squared minus y squared and dxy orbitals combine, they form what are called delta bonding and delta antibonding orbitals. Delta orbitals change sign on a C4 rotation around the bonding axis. When molecular orbitals combine successfully, they produce a bonding and antibonding orbital. The bonding orbital is lower in energy than the atomic orbitals, and the antibonding is higher in energy than the atomic orbitals. Molecular orbitals can form between atomic orbitals of different type if their energies and symmetries are similar. If the z-axis is kept as the bonding axis, an s-orbital and the dz-squared orbitals can overlap and form a molecular orbital. Other combinations of atomic orbitals are less successful, such as between the s and the dxz atomic orbitals, as the s orbital approach is along the node in the d orbital. 
Molecular orbitals can also be labeled with a subscript G or U, meaning garada or ungarada. G or garada molecular orbitals are symmetric to inversion and ungarada are asymmetric to inversion. The bonding sigma molecular orbital formed from 1s orbitals is garada, meaning that it doesn't change when inverted. The antibonding sigma star molecular orbital formed from 1s orbitals is, however, ungarada, meaning that it does change when inverted. It is asymmetric to inversion. Let's check comprehension.